Uh, really quick, let's get over to the NBA. Preseason is here. Uh, we had we had Nets Lakers uh, yesterday, and then today there's a whole bunch of uh, preseason games going down. So I mean, basketball is back once again. Uh, however, there are still a few players who will be missing some games. Uh, one guy that 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 we thought was gonna miss some games, but he wasn't ten toes down, and uh, he kind of he kind of punked out uh, after he realized he was gonna be losing nine million or close to nine nine million dollars if he didn't get vaccinated. And that, that was Andrew Wiggins of the Golden State Warriors. He uh, you know, we we let you guys know uh, it was the last week's show that he had put in for a religious waiver, uh, so he did not have to take the COVID vaccine when he was denied that. You know, I thought he was gonna gonna wait it out. But it didn't take much longer. Once they start putting out them numbers of how much he was going to lose if you didn't play in any home games, uh, he changed his tune really quick. But uh, Kyrie, our main man from Brooklyn, or not from Brooklyn, but but out of Brooklyn right now, uh, he's still he's still holding on uh, to to his uh, he's not getting vaccinated stance. Uh, Steve Kerr said he doesn't know when he'll be joining the team or if he will be joining the team. Uh, I'm mean, excuse me, Steve Nash, uh, you know, made a statement saying he doesn't know if or when Kyrie Irving will be joining the team. That scares me. That scares me when the head coach is saying, I don't know, you know, when or if Kyrie Irving will be joining the team. That scares me a lot. <laughs> Uh, it, it should it should scare a lot of people who view the Nets as title contenders. And uh, I'll start with Andrew Wiggins. Let, let's start there. Um, I'm not too surprised. Andrew Wiggins, um, solid ball player, but he's not a star. And so I think to just give up on money and, and sit it out would have been a tough, a tough blow to him because his contract is up at the end of next year. He's probably going to get traded at some point this year. These might be his last two big years of contract money. Uh, before he starts playing for for significant less, significantly less money in his career. He's still a young guy, but I don't think he's ever going to get that type of contract again. So uh, the smart move was probably, hey, look, let me get vaccinated. Let me just cash in on these next two seasons and then see what it, where it goes from there. Um, he's also going to be on a team that has uh, playoff aspirations. So I, he maybe didn't want to miss out on that opportunity either. Yeah. In terms of Kyrie, though, you and I have, have talked about it. Um, I feel like sometimes we're picking on Kyrie because we talk about him so much. The good and the bad, obviously. The bad mainly being as a as a player. Nothing bad as a person, right? But as a player. And I just I'm interested to really see how long this plays out, Trip. That's the part that that intrigues me the most. Because if I'm Kevin Durant and if I'm James Harden, two guys who really work their way to Brooklyn, Kevin Durant as a free agent, Harden forced his way there by trade. I'm in Brooklyn for one reason and one reason only. That is to win a championship. And if this dude ain't on board to do that, then he needs to get out this locker room. I'm sorry. And I'm not sure what Kyrie's really thinking here. I don't know what his play is here. I don't know what his angle is here. But him, KD, and and Harden need to have a long sit down. And when they open that door up, there needs to be some sort of resolution. Either I'm getting the vaccine or I'm not getting the vaccine. And you guys now just need to move on from me because at some point, somebody's going to have to call it what it is professionally. This ain't got nothing to do with his religious beliefs. We're not going to pretend to be medical experts. Purely yeah. basketball is selfish of Kyrie, what he's doing right now. You took as much time as you wanted to take off last year for your own mental health issues. And we respect it and we get it. But you came and went as you wanted to. Nobody held you accountable when you decided to take two weeks off in the middle of the season. No one, no one got mad at you for taking time off whenever you wanted to take time off. Well, at least we did anyway. But even, even within that locker room, we never heard any friction. We never heard anybody. I, I, I mean, I mean uh, amongst the media, I'm saying. Amongst the media, right. We, 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 all we could do was shrug our shoulders and said it's Kyrie being Kyrie. Yeah. But now, to me, this, is, this comes across as very selfish of Kyrie. If you don't want to get the vaccine, albeit that is your prerogative, but don't hold up the team because you don't want to get the vaccine. That's when you need to say, just come out and say, I'm not getting a vaccine and I'm not playing this season. And you guys trade me or do whatever you want to do moving forward. But don't start to hold the organization hostage now where they're trying to basically negotiate with you to get you into camp. 
because how the hell are they supposed to prepare for a season that you may miss 50 plus game, uh, 50, uh, 50 percent of the season? Yeah. And, and that's my thing, you know, and, and I think that, you know, because the fact that, you know, we don't just pick at Kyrie Irving. OK, we when Kyrie is in his regular life outside of basketball, we speak very highly of Kyrie Irving. So we are allowed to be extra critical of him when we're just talking specifically basketball. I don't care whether you get the vaccine, whether you don't get the vaccine, but there is no way that your head coach should make a statement saying that we don't know when or even if Kyrie Irving will be reporting. There is no way that sh that should happen. You are a starter on this team. You are a very big piece of this team. Uh, you know, you mentioned guys, you know, coming here to play alongside of you. I think I'd probably be the most upset if I'm James Harden just because I have not won a championship ring yet. Kevin Durant has several. So, you know, maybe for him, he might feel a little bit differently. And him and Kyrie are actually really close friends. So maybe he feels a little bit differently. Who knows? But I do feel like as a teammate, as an employee of the Brooklyn Nets and of the, the, the NBA fraternity, I think that you owe it to your not only your teammates and your coaching staff, but I think you owe it to these people to say whether or not you plan on getting vaccinated. There should not ever be a, a situation where your head coach has to come out and make a statement because he's being bombarded because of you and he does not know what's going on. I think that is very selfish of you as a player and you need to fix that right now. I don't want to hear... I need my privacy and this and that. There's no privacy when it comes to whether or not you're going to get vaccinated because guess what? The Barclays Center is not changing their stance on the vaccine. You cannot get into that building. Madison Square Garden, they are not changing their mind on, on their stance on the vaccine. You cannot get into those buildings. You have to understand that New York was hit the hardest out of every state in the United States of America by COVID. So they are very right. And it's their, it is it is their right to say we do not want anyone in this building who is not vaccinated. I get it. OK, I understand you might not want to put the vaccine in your body. And it's unfortunate that you play for a team that has a stadium that you have to be vaccinated to enter. But. You owe it to your team. You owe it to those guys in that in that locker room to tell them where you stand. Well said, bro. You're right. You you can't play limbo with it. If you don't want to get the vaccine, that's fine. But then let the team know I'm not getting the vaccine. And this is the circumstances that I'm going into next season. And if you guys decide to trade me, I completely understand you. This this game, I think, is, is very childish and selfish of Kyrie. This comment of my privacy. I get all that. I get all of that privacy talk, but let's not pretend like when Kyrie has an injury and he gets a surgery done, that that news isn't broadcasted on every sports network. We, you weren't concerned with your privacy when you got knee surgeries, when you've gotten injections, when you've sat out a season, you know what I'm saying? You weren't concerned with your privacy then. So if you don't want to get the vaccine, just say that. And, and kudos, I, I want to commend Jonathan Isaac. Because he articulated it very well as to why he doesn't want to get the vaccine. And I respect that. Yeah. But he is he is telling his team, I'm not getting the vaccine. Yes. In his case, one, obviously, he's not playing for a team that's playing for a title. So th there's not going to be the same backlash there. But he also does not play in a city and state that is mandating everyone who come into the arena be vaccinated. As you highlighted, Trip, New York has those mandates. If Kyrie expects to play any game in Brooklyn or Madison Square Garden in Manhattan, He's going to have to be vaccinated. Either that or get traded somewhere else. Oh, and, and guess what? You also, you kind of make it impossible for a team to trade for you when you say, if you trade me, I'll retire. So it's, now you now you really just, you, you got your team in a bad way because they don't know if you're going to actually play this season or at least, you know, the home games anyway. And they can't even start if they wanted to say, you know what, we don't got time for this BS. Let's just trade them because statements like this are, are, are popping out of the woodworks. So what team is going to say, oh, yeah, let me give you all of my, my, my these good pieces, young pieces, old veterans, superstars, stars, all stars, whatever. And I don't even know if this kid is going to actually stay and play on my team. Who's who's doing that? Who's making a trade? If, especially, you know, we talked about a, a potential Ben Simmons for Kyrie Irving swap. If I'm Philly, 
Are you out of your damn mind? I'm not about to trade this, this Ben Simmons for, for Kyrie Irving, and I'm not even sure he's actually going to play on my team. I'd be crazy to do that. So now you really got your team in a bad way. So listen, man, Kyrie, I'm sorry, man. Love you for what you do off the court, but, bruh, you got to get it together on that court. You, you you know, you owe it to your teammates, man. It's not just you. It's like, it's just, it's just, it's very selfish right now how you handle in this situation. Uh, you know, shoot, at least you, Kevin Durant, you got to at least have that conversation with Kevin Durant because y'all came here together. That's what, that's your closest friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, let, let him know what's up. But again, you know, there's just no way Steve Nash should be up here talking about, I don't know when or if Kyrie is going to be um, joining the team. I 1000% agree. Like you at least owe that to KD. You at least owe it to KD. And I mean, it's a conversation we probably have to have on a different episode, but this player empowerment, I think is going to push the league in a certain direction that a lot of people aren't, isn't going to like, because it's, it's not just these type of issues. It's this continual, I'm going to do what I want. And then I'm going to threaten to not report to another team. I'm going to tell you, I only want to get traded here. Like it's it's getting it's getting to a very touchy point, I think, where stars are kind of abusing the player empowerment. But that's for another episode, man. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. 